tiny house prepper live simple live free Hello everybody, Bill here with Tiny House Prepper. Uh, as our name says, we live in a tiny house and as our name says, we are also preppers. Now, living in a tiny house is not that unique. There are many uh, YouTube channels about tiny house living. And there are also many YouTube channels about how to be a prepper. But I haven't seen anything that combines living in a tiny house with prepping. So that makes us kind of unique, I think. Uh, but it also provides or creates some very unique uh, difficulties and problems with uh, prepping because we simply don't have the room uh, to store all of our preps. Now, anybody who is a prepper knows that it does take a lot of room to store your stuff and probably the, the, the item that takes the most room is the food. So what we want to talk about, what I want to talk about today is how we store our prepper food living in our tiny house. Now the other thing that could possibly take up a lot of room is if you have to store water. Uh, we do not have to do that. We have a, a good source of, of water nearby for emergencies, so we don't really have to store that. Uh, I'll talk about that in a different video. But storing food, prepper food, when you live in a small space. Now there are basically four different types of food that you can use in your long-term food storage. The first is canned goods, obviously. Um, you buy them in a can at the grocery store. In this category I would also include if you do your own canning, if you have a garden and you get the mason jars and you do your own canning, though I don't know why that's not called jarring, but anyway, canned goods, first uh, category. Second category is dry goods, things like pasta. Um, I use whole wheat pasta and Elizabeth is, because it's, it's, it's healthier than regular pasta, and Elizabeth needs to stay away from gluten, so we have gluten-free pasta for her, so we have to keep two separate types of pasta. Anyway, dried goods, things like pasta, coffee, flour, sugar, uh, popcorn, things like that. The third category is freeze-dried foods. And for us, we use Thrive freeze-dried food, and I'll be talking more about that. Now, the fourth one is one that we don't really use. I don't know that much about, but it is uh, dehydrated food. I know you can buy dehydrators where you just plug it into the wall and 12 hours later your food is dehydrated. Or I've seen videos online of how to build your own solar powered uh, dehydrator. We don't use that for, mostly because we don't have a garden and uh, to, you know, to get this food to, to, to dehydrate. Also, I, like I said, I don't know that much about it. I have no idea what the shelf life is on that. I don't know if it's you know, two weeks or two months or two years. If anybody knows, uh, you know, what the shelf life is or anything about it, you know, do make some comments down below so you can let us all know. So anyway, we, we do canned goods, dried goods, and freeze-dried goods. Now, first I want to talk about the canned goods. When we first started prepping, we really didn't know what we were doing, but obviously you just go buy food, right? So we went and bought a bunch of canned foods. All I, would just, all I would do is just every time we went to the grocery store I would spend an extra 10 or 15 dollars and buy extra canned food. Started storing it downstairs in our basement. We had shelves against the wall. So uh, we had a lot of uh, vegetables of course. We had some fruits. We had a few meats. But I discovered a couple of problems that I didn't know how to uh, deal with. And so I went online to try to find an answer. But two problems. First of all, cans have to be rotated. They have a, a date stamp on the can here that is usually two years or maybe three years in the future. Now it probably will last a lot longer than that, but those are the, the expiration dates. It says Best Buy. It doesn't say uh, don't use after that date. But still, they have to be rotated. So I had the food on the shelves, like I said, I had these, you know, 
and every time we would buy some more food, some more cans, I would have to go downstairs, I would have to take everything off of the shelf and take the newest stuff and put it in the back and then put all the new stuff in the front, So that, I mean all the old stuff in the front, so new stuff in the back, old stuff in the front. That way we're using the oldest first so that it will always be rotated. Now when we only had a few cans that wasn't a problem, but once it, we started to get a lot of food, that became, started to become a real chore. Every time, you know, we'd buy two or three cans of something, I'd have to unload 20 cans to put those two in and then put them all back again. It was a real pain in the neck. I didn't know there was a solution to that, uh, but I discovered it uh, when I went searching online. Now, the other problem that we had was that I did an inventory and realized that we had all kinds of vegetables. We had quite a few fruits, but we only had a few meats. We had basically tuna, we had canned chicken, sardines, um, that was about it, you know, and anything else, the canned meat was just disgusting, you know, deviled ham and all that kind of, ugh, awful stuff. So I went online basically to see if I could find an answer to what am I going to do about meats. And that's when I discovered a company that is now called Thrive Life, but at the time it was called Shelf Reliance. Now. This, might, this video might sound like it's a uh, Thrive Life commercial. That's not the intent here. Um, we had several significant problems in our food storage and Thrive answered those problems for us. So in order for us to tell you how we store food, we have to tell you about the solutions we found, which is Thrive Life. And let me just take a minute here to say that um, we, yes, we are consultants with Thrive. We sell Thrive food, but we do not recommend Thrive because we sell it. It's actually the other way around. We sell it because we recommend it. When we first discovered it, we liked it so much. We were using it all the time. We liked it so much. We discovered we were telling all of our friends about it. And so we decided that, hey, if we're going to tell everybody about it anyway, we might as well you know, sign up as a consultant and maybe make a few bucks. So that's what we did. But, uh, you know, if you look at my channel, you'll see a lot of Thrive videos. But quite frankly, those Thrive videos would be there even if we were not consultants because we like it so much and we think it really uh, solves a problem uh, that we had for long-term storage um, as well as how convenient it is for everyday use. So, anyway, as I was saying, when I first discovered this company, originally it was called um, Shelf Reliance. And what I discovered was not only did they have the, the freeze-dried food, but they also had some really cool racks for uh, storing food that automatically rotated the, the food for you. It's called uh, um, the Food Rotation System, or FRS. And um, come on, I'll show you. So, oh, yeah. Let me get not get ahead of myself. The four different categories of food, the cans, you don't want these to freeze, and that's the problem. You have to store them inside of a heated area or they will freeze. And if, if these freeze, it'll break the seal. Um, if, if jars freeze from your own canning, then you know they could shatter or push the, the, the metal top up off. So we had to find some way to be able to store this inside of our tiny little 250 square foot tiny house and that was where the Thrive Life um, food rotation system storage shelves came in and I'll show you that to you now. So here we are in the kitchen. We'll go back through the bathroom and into the bedroom. There's our bed and down underneath is what I want to show you. So here we have the front part of our bed, and here's our food storage racks. Now this frame I built myself, see I put a drawer here, another drawer here, there's a shoe cubby under here, but in here is where the food storage racks are. Now originally, before I started using the uh, freeze dried food, we had a lot of canned goods like this. And so the first thing I bought, I actually bought from Thrive, was one of their food storage racks. And it was a tall one, it was like six feet tall, it was this wide. Um, it had, uh, f I think, five rows in there. 
but uh, when we moved into the tiny house and I built this, I took that rack and I cut it up with a hacksaw and put it in and built it in underneath of here. Now this is really cool the way this works because it automatically rotates the shelves, or uh, I'm sorry, the cans. When you buy a can, you put it in the top and then that, that puts the, the newest ones here, the oldest ones are in the bottom and you, you take it out of the bottom and it just rotates it through. So just like that. So you're always putting the new ones in the top and you're always eating from the bottom like that so it can rotate it. Now um, these uh, racks, these can tracks, it's called a can track, come in three different sizes. This is all, this is the small and the small ones are for these kinds of cans. And then they have mid-sized ones which are for uh, the Thrive Pantry cans or for larger cans that you buy at the grocery store. And then the large ones are for the Thrive number 10. So three different sizes of can tracks for three different sizes of can. Now the racks here come from Thrive in many different sizes. Like I said, the one that I had originally was about six feet tall. They've got tall ones, they've got short ones, they've got uh, the three different sizes of can racks, depending on, or can tracks, depending on what size can you want to use. They have ones that are specifically designed to go under the bed. They look like this, they're long and, and short. They have small ones that will go into a, uh, a pantry or into a kitchen cupboard. That, that are only like three cans wide. Um, it's amazing what, how many different uh, sizes and varieties and styles, but they all do the same thing in rotating your food. And also, it's just a very good way to maximize space. Each one of these tracks holds 10 cans, so you got 40 cans in here. If I had 40 cans all stacked in there, I'd never have, be able to access any of them. Also notice that you can vi vary the width See, this is for a can, and these are for tuna. And I, I was able to make them much shorter so that the tuna cans can fit in there. So you have a, a lot of leeway in, um, in designing your food storage. Uh, so you can use these for Thrive freeze-dried food cans, the big ones, the, the number 10, or the pantry. Or if you get the small tracks, then you can use them for canned goods that you buy at the grocery store. Now when we first started we had all canned goods like this, but now that we're using mostly Thrive, we don't have much canned goods left um, that we're using. We only have a few things that we use that Thrive does not carry. For some reason, I don't know why, Thrive doesn't have beets. So we have a row of beets here. We have a row of tuna, which Thrive doesn't have. Uh, we have a row of refried beans. Now they have, re Thrive has refried beans, but we just haven't tried them yet. We already had these, so we're we're storing those. Over here we got a couple of, uh, two rows of, um, of yams. So, but we have greatly decreased the amount of actual canned goods that we have as our uh, Thrive um, freeze-dried storage has increased. But this was one of the problems that we had with how to store and how to rotate canned goods and the Thrive food rotation system took care of that for us. To find it, just go to our Thrive website and uh, click on shop and then go to food rotation and you'll see all the varieties of different sizes and shapes of food rotation system racks that they have there. So that takes care of the, can the canned goods. Now the other two types of food that we use, the dried goods and the freeze dried. Um, we didn't know it when we first started using the Thrive Foods, but we actually answered a question, a problem that we were going to have after we moved into our tiny house, because we were in a big house when we first started. And the, the point is, Thrive freeze-dried food, you don't have to worry about it freezing. There's no moisture in there. All of the moisture has been completely removed from the cans, so it can weather, it can weather over in very cold temperatures, and there's no damage, there's no problem. Uh, we just came through our first winter, in the tiny house and all of our Thrive food uh, was not in a heated space and we're still using it and it's all fine. Same thing with the dried goods. This stuff doesn't matter if it gets cold. So basically, you don't have to keep them in your tiny house. You can store them off-site someplace, which is what we're doing. 
Um, you can keep them in an unheated shed or a garage. You can rent a storage locker downtown someplace that's unheated and you don't have to pay the extra for a climate controlled storage. You can store it all in there, no problem. <clears throat> you can put it in the trunk of a car if you want to. Now, I wouldn't do that in the summer because actually heat does more damage than the cold does. You don't want to store it for long periods of time at over 90 degrees. Not that it would, it would um, start to spoil, but the nutritional uh, value of it would start to deteriorate if you continue to store it at extreme high temperatures like that. But um, this also kind of solves another problem in, with security because these are stored off-site. Nobody knows they're there. We can go get them whenever we need them. Um, but that's the cool thing about Thrive and, and about dried dry food is you don't have to keep them from freezing. So, you know, while well, you might say, well, if you've got a food, uh, I mean, a, a storage locker that you've rented, then you're living in more than 250 square feet. Well, you, you can say that, but no, I don't think so, because we're actually just living in our, in our little RV tiny house here. That is extra food storage that's not part of our daily life, you know, unless the the balloon goes up and the end of the world happens then we have that available but that's not part of our of our living space so there you have it how do you store food in a uh, tiny space use the uh, food rotation racks for the cans to keep them from freezing and store your freeze-dried goods and your dried goods off-site someplace and don't have to worry about the the uh, temperature uh, I hope that's helped it certainly is has, is working well for us so if you've enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, live simple, live free. Thank you.